With spring training in full swing, we continue our 2018 division previews here on Prime Sports Baseball. On today's show, we take a look at the AL and NL Central divisions with each team's top off-season moves, including the latest World Series features, our predictions, and much more. That's Prime Sports Baseball with Greg Gonzalez on the Prime Sports Radio Network. Starts now. All right, it's Thursday, the 8th of March, 2018. I'm your host, Greg DePama. Welcome to more baseball talk on Prime Sports Network. We have three more of the, actually two more of these. We've got the, uh, I keep getting confused with uh, sports with other divisions and locales. I thought we were talking about the North today, uh, but it's the Central, and we've only got six divisions instead of eight. So we got West coming up next Thursday, and then our... 2018 season preview show is coming up on the 22nd. We'll make sure to get on uh, someone from our new media partner at covers.com. Uh, give uh, to get so the more the, the more predictions, the better as uh, the futures uh, start taking shape. I can't imagine they're going to change much. We'll let you know what the futures are as we go team by team in the central AL NL. Scott Solitoro, uh, welcome uh, to the program. And uh, it's been almost, what, 10 days, two weeks since we talked about the Eastern divisions. Wasn't it, is it, was it not two weeks to the day? I Might it be. Was two weeks ago today. Yeah, could so, very well yeah, be. Yep. Two weeks ago today. A lot, just before we get into the divisions, uh, obviously, some, uh, as there's still several uh, big name free agents to uh, not be signed, I guess we could just go through quickly and you know, in case there's a few that everybody missed, uh, you know, so John Jay to the Royals, uh, that happened, uh, I believe yesterday, mm-hmm. um, two days ago, Tyler Clippard to the Blue Jays, uh, you know, a guy that you know all too much about as a Nats fan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tyler Clippard to the Blue Jays. Yeah. How he's getting old, Blue- isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. He's 33. Um, Tim Lincecum to the, uh, Rangers to be their closer. So that was a big one. <laughs> what did he do last year? Nothing. So he just took the year off? Basically. Yeah, that shows you how desperate Texas is. We'll talk about their weak team next next week. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, hey, that's about it uh, in terms of the big, big name, you know, signings in the last couple of weeks, obviously. Uh, next week when we get to the West, we'll be talking about the big O out in L.A., the uh, Otani who uh, struck out looking terrible on the Clayton Kershaw while he was hitting the other day. But that's uh, irrelevant for today's talk. All right. So Central of American League will get started with first, and we'll go alphabetically starting with the White Sox. Uh, the oh. White Sox, uh, now look, it's going to be a long season. They're 125 to 1 to, uh, to win the World Series, which that will, won't happen, of course. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I look, they had a plan, and I like the plan. Uh, I like what Rick Hahn is doing, and uh, they got a ton of really good prospects. So if I'm a White Sox fan, uh, I you just sit back for the next couple of years, and maybe even next year's a year after watching more young kids uh, uh, play, especially the pitchers. They got to find a couple of these young arms because they got so many good young arms. If they just get two that look like they could be top of the rotation arms, you go into the off season like everybody else. Uh, and uh, you know the bonanza free agent off season of next uh, next off season, and 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 you can add to this team and maybe get into the wild card race. So I, I think it just of course it all depends on how the young guys play. Well, they've got two of the top ten uh, arms in terms of uh, um, prospects in baseball. Michael Kopech, everybody's just waiting and waiting and waiting. I, I'm somewhat I think I'm expecting him to make the opening day roster at this point. He was the uh, the number one prospect acquired by the Red Sox in the uh, Chris Sale trade. And then they also have uh, Alec Hansen, another guy who uh, was acquired, uh, I believe, in a trade. Uh, oh, no, no, this is a guy who was drafted by the by the White Sox, but he's also a guy. Yeah, second round who, pick. Uh, second round pick late this year, early next year. He had a great year last year with a 2.8 uh, ERA in the minors uh, with 191 strikeouts, only 50 walks. So there's a guy. Two guys again. Two of the top, you know, 15 arms in the uh, in, in the prospect world, and then of course they've got you know two of the top tw- 10 
uh, outfield prospects, too, in Louis Roberts and uh, Eloy Jimenez, who they got from the Cubbies. And uh, as far as their other pitchers that are expected to, to, to start with them, you still have young arms like Radon, Giolito, Lopez, yeah. Carson Fulmer. Uh, they've got to find a closer. And uh, that's uh, that's something that doesn't have to happen this year. Uh, but I don't know if uh, if, if Manaya is going to wind up closing for him again. You know, he closed uh, last year for him. And, uh, you know, he, he was OK, uh, but he's another you know fairly inexperienced uh, pitcher. I don't think he's yeah. the, I don't think he's the closer of the future. No, I think <laughs> Farquhar could close if they needed him to. Uh, God, they got over from Seattle who uh, had some closing experience uh, in some roles that, with the Mariners. So they've got they've got some, you know, they got some stuff that's there for them. It'll be interesting to see what they do with, uh, you know, they have some starters that they're not so sure of. Like, let's see what they do with Rodon this year. After last year, you know, he took a big step back after he was really good uh, in 2016. We'll mm -hmm. see what they do with him. But yeah. right now, they right now they don't really have much going from a pitching wise. Hitting wise, they're they're not bad. They still have all the Garcias. Like I mentioned, they have Eloy Jimenez. They still have Jose Abreu. They have Matt Davidson, who is an up-and-coming third baseman. They got Mancata, obviously, from the Red Sox as well. And they have, you know, Yomer Sanchez. They've got some really good players. Uh, and then they, they signed Wellington Castillo, the catcher from the Orioles. So they've got some really good players in the field and actually have a pretty solid lineup coming in this year. Uh, and they'll hit the long ball pretty well. So we'll see what that pitching staff can do. It's one of the worst staffs in baseball. Yeah, but again, the pitching staff on paper, and, and I'm not talking, of course, we're not even going to mention James Shields, but when we talk about all those young arms, they're they're very talented. So it's just a matter of, sure, they, they haven't shown it yet, but that's why they went out and, and made all those deals. So they have about six young arms. That's why I said all you need is two of them to be top of the rotations, and it's a numbers game. So out of those six or seven young arms they have, just two of them succeed. And, and you're headed in the right direction. So uh, that's the hope for the White Sox, and that's all you can uh, that's all you can do. And then maybe one of those uh, one of those pitchers could turn into a closer. Who knows? Uh, I don't James know. James Shields, by the way, James Shields did make his first start today. Uh, his first start of the spring today. So I don't think that they I, I certainly can't expect anything. No. From. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if you'd get it. Even if Shields and, had a great first half, I don't even know if you'd get and, anything and for it's him. Still, it's still one of the worst trades in recent memory to me that they traded Fernando Tatis Jr. to him. What was that, two years ago? Something like that. No. Yeah. All right. So the White Sox, again, long season, young team, though. Uh it appears they're heading in the right direction. Uh, next up is Cleveland and uh, Cleveland eight to one. Not a bad number. I can't imagine that the Indians are going to be. I mean, look, maybe at some point in the season, it goes up to 10 to one if they get off to a slow start. But I think eight to one right now, if you like the Indians, you might want to go ahead and take them because I don't think you're going to get much better odds than that. The question is, what do you think about the Indians? Because last year, really the last couple of years, I mean, you are up three, one in the world series. Uh, you're up two nothing last year in the playoffs. You keep losing these playoff series when you're up and you've got these really good teams. And how long can that continue to work out for you until you take advantage of it? Uh, look, I know I'm a, I'm a Nationals fan, but the Indians, uh, they were so close, too. They've got a great manager uh, on paper. I know they lost a couple of pieces. I get that. But still, on paper, I mean, come on. This is definitely one of the teams to beat. No, it definitely is. And look, I mean, they lost two huge hitters, replaced one of them with one that, is, in my opinion, is extremely comparable. They lost, you know, Carlos Santana replaced him with Yonder Alonso, who uh, people don't know as much about. Nice He's move. Wasting away in, in, the, in the NL West, with the Padres for a while and with Oakland. So he's just been wasting away out there. This guy can really, you know, he can hit the ball. And, and Cleveland's a much better hitter's park than either one of those two were. So I expect him cheaper. to be. Cheaper, cheaper you know, too. Yes, definitely. It's cheaper. And then, I mean, again, another player who is still somehow amazingly underrated in this game uh, it's still Jose Ramirez. Sure. Who is just unbelievable. The guy can literally play basically every position except for pitcher if you really needed him to, if push came to shove. Uh, it's, it's, it's outstanding. He's a switch hitter. He steals bases. What more can you need 
He doesn't strike out a ton. Um, and then they got, you know, it's just going to be a really good roster to build around him and Lindor and, and you know, Michael Brantley showed some positive signs last year. They got Bradley Zimmer, the, the young gun they're really excited about. Tyler Naquin, he can get better. And then they still have Edwin Carnacion, who, you know, can just still hit 35 home runs uh, any given Sunday. Not, not obviously, can't forget about Jason Kipnis either. And the pitching staff, it's really all about staying healthy. Well, that's, uh, yeah. This is this is the mess of the of the. Uh, well, I wouldn't get that carried away, but. Uh, well, I mean, in terms of healthiness, this is they haven't been able to keep it all together. Uh, you know, they, Danny Salazar, he's going to be out for a little while. That was just announced yesterday uh, that Danny Salazar will probably miss maybe the first week or so of of, of regular season. So if they have McAllister and and Carrasco, Bauer, and obviously you know the big gun Kluver, if those guys can all stay healthy, they get Salazar back. You're looking at you know the, the best rotation in, in the American League. Well, you, you got yeah. I mean, look. I mean, with Kluba, Carrasco, Bauer, Salazar, that's an awesome four. Nobody's got a four like that. Uh, and then when and then we've got Tomlin. And so if 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 Salazar misses time, you throw Clevenger in the rotation. You're okay. So they've right. got that extra starting pitcher. That as long as they right. don't lose, he. The point is, is don't don't have your guys hurt in the playoffs because Cleveland's going to win the division. We know that. Uh, right. So don't like Kluber looked like he definitely wore down. I mean, he did not look good at all in the postseason. Well, so they got to do what what you have been what you are begging you know the Nats to do, and that's when you get that once you get that nice little comfortable lead yep. in your division. Once you get that eight to ten game lead, it's okay to. Let them, you know, miss every every couple. Yes, of stars. yes. Stash. Look, the Dodgers were great at that. May, maybe no other team handled the new ten day DL rule with all the excess pitchers limiting their innings better last year. Their starters and the Dodgers, sure, and that's what sure you have is. to do. You know, if you're sure a team like Cleveland. So, um, but yeah, I mean, so yeah, I don't think that even though Santana, because Santana for Alonso, I mean, that's basically it, right? I mean, there's no that's- other moves. Well, except so for lost, Shaw, they lost Shaw, right? They lost Shaw. They lost Jay Bruce. Uh, who, yeah. Again, I think Jay. I think Jay Bruce is slightly overrated. They they have this the the, the kid Francisco Mejia, the catcher who is a switch hitter, uh, is gonna is gonna make either Jan Gomes or go. Roberto Perez. One of those two guys is not gonna make this roster opening day because Mejia is ready and he's he's ready. You know, he's, okay. He's, he's, he's gonna, ready. He's he'll, he'll, he'll be open. You think he'll start opening day or just be the backup? I think he will probably uh, be the backup, if I had to guess. You know, they called him up last year. He didn't have the best uh, 10, 10 at-bats I think he had. I think he only had two hits. Uh, but, uh, but if he has a really I good think... spring and Gomes and Perez don't hit like they didn't hit last year, then yeah, why, why not start the kid, you know? I, yeah, I mean, I, I think you got to start him. Uh, and uh, it's not like they're taking – you know, too much out if they start Gomes or, or Perez. But I, I can't imagine them having three catchers on the opening day roster. And what do you think about maybe like a Bradley Zimmer as a as Here's, a fantasy sleeper? Because like you said, you lose Bruce, but that's when you, you look at other young players like Zimmer that should be stepping up and maybe having a breakout year. Do, do, do you think he could have a breakout year? Yes, I think he's there. I think he is their premier outfielder this season. Uh, we saw flashes of it last year. You know, he's got some serious pop. He's also a very good fielder. He's got a good arm. Uh, they're still, I mean, they're going to stick with all reliable Michael Brantley. You know he'll be in the starting, the opening day uh, uh, lineup. And then it'll be a question of, is it Brandon Guy or Tyler Naquin? But I would assume uh, that, uh, Mike, that, excuse me, that Bradley Zimmer is definitely starting opening day. And I, I think he's a guy that you got to keep an eye on. Going back real quickly to Mejia, the only thing that might hurt him is if the Indians do what teams do, you know, like what the Cubs did with uh, oh, yeah. with uh, with Chris Bryant and hold yeah. him out until like mid May. Yeah. All right. Uh, what the Dodgers did with Cody Bellinger, we see this every year. And, and what about him playing third base though? We're, that's what I mean. We're hearing that because he played third base uh, in the Arizona League. I, uh, you know, I, I don't know exactly where you move Ramirez, but I uh, mean, well, that, that's the thing with Ramirez is, so, I mean, first of all, you're going to keep. You're going to keep Kipnis at second and, and Lindor at short. So I would imagine Jose Ramirez is going to be the third baseman and Yonder Orlando is first base. You don't really want to mess with that. That's a really good setup. That's an incredibly, incredibly talented infield, both defensively and offensively. So 
I mean, he, uh, I, I think he's got to be a catcher. I think he's got to be a catcher. And they got Encarnacion at DH. You can't take him out of that role. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, the only thing I could see is Mejia is, you know, a switch hitter. So let's say the days where there's a lefty on the mound, maybe they would take Yonder Alonso out of the lineup. Not that I would recommend doing that no, at all. No, but you would take Kipnis incredible. out. Maybe if there's a yeah. lefty. Yeah, take well, Kipnis yeah. out. And then, and then you move Ramirez over to second, second. and then yeah. maybe put Mejia at third. But I, I don't think you mess with that too much. Uh, but they do have another catcher uh, that if they wanted to say, think in the future about what to do, like if they were going to, because uh, Kipnis, it, l- let's keep in mind, I mean, Kipnis, you know, he's, he's getting up a little bit in age and didn't have a great year last year. I uh, missed a little bit of time. And so if they feel like, and I, I don't know what his contract's like, but if they feel like it's uh, in, a, in a year, maybe next year, that they want to move Ramirez to second, maybe they move this kid Mejia to third. Uh, if they feel Eric Haas, who's another uh, 25-year-old catcher at double A, he hit 26 home runs last year. And so they've got Kipnis. They've got Kipnis for uh, I think three more years after this year, uh, and he's making he's he's projected to make about fourteen million for a that's year. That's a lot of money. For the next, yeah, that's a lot of money. Yep, for uh, for for that market, if Kipnis doesn't have a good year this year, so right. But I, I mean, so far uh, last year, you know, the injuries piled up, and that yeah, that really was was a, a, bu- a, a you know a big buzzkill for him. But besides that, the the previous years, you know, he was hitting you know close to three hundred with. Uh, 25 homers. I mean, the guy, he's hes a very good player. He's a clubhouse guy, too. Uh, sure. Oh, yeah, only, definitely. You don't want to get rid of him only, if you could avoid it. No, they're not going to get rid of him. It's just, yeah. Yeah. We'll I, see. But I, I can imagine that. All right. Uh, so, and, and, and also, Cleveland will do what they need to do, like last year with Bruce. If, uh, you know, when they're Always sitting will. there at the deadline, they need to add a player somewhere. You would most likely think it would be offensively because that's really what's been holding them back the last couple of postseasons. Again, even though Kluber right. did not pitch well, uh, so so let's rest the starters, make sure they're ready to go in the postseason. Number one and number two, uh, let's get that offense going. And and if you don't feel it's it's going, then uh, make another deal at the deadline. So yep, yep, uh, you got it right. All right, Detroit is next. Very surprised that Detroit is forty to one, uh, which is actually just—it's almost—they're almost the same as Minnesota to what to win the World Vegas Series. Know, right? So, what yeah. does Vegas? What does Vegas know? Yeah. What uh, have what, I don't know. what have they gotten that I haven't gotten yet? Was it because Liriano pitched two scoreless innings yesterday? No. Is that what Vegas knows? That can't be what they know. Let me go back in. I'm 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 I'm. I'm confused. Let me make sure there isn't. It should be another zero after that. <laughs> Imagine 400 to one. That'd be a little crazy, though. I don't that think that doesn't sound right either, though. Yeah, that's too far. So let me just double check. I can't. Here's, here's I can't imagine it's four. It's 400. <coughs> it is. Here's what. It is what. 400. Okay. But still, wow, 400. Well, it certainly makes a lot more sense. It than does make 40. a lot more sense than 40. Uh, but because wow! If you were going to ask me, if you were going to ask me how to defend that, I, I, I honestly was going to seriously struggle. Yeah. How to defend? But, but do you, uh, so? Do you think this is? Do do you do you believe that they are worse than Chicago and Kansas City? Yes, I think they're the worst team in the division. That's why I was so shocked when you said forty. What are you going to do? Just, uh, what are you going to trade uh, Fulmer? I can't. You can't trade Fulmer. He's only twenty-four years old. You gotta. You gotta stick with it. You gotta build around him. He just happens to be literally your only legitimate starting pitcher. That's it. They have him. They have about four, maybe five legitimate players, uh, you know, hitters. They got obviously Miguel Cabrera, who there's a guy who they, I could see them trading to somebody who needs a big bat, you know, come playoff time. They got Victor Martinez, another guy. Uh, and then they got a bunch of, you know, eh, Castellanos had really that one outstanding year that he started, uh, the slump a bit. They they're, they're really high on Jacoby Jones and they're very high on James McCann. Uh, but do, do you know what that, do, do you know what is remaining on Cabrera's contract? Um, I think it's a lot. Uh, Six I think it, it, more years. Wow. A hundred and eighty-four million. Still to be paid. That's oh, a lot of money. My lord. I mean, you would have to think. I mean, it's a, it's just a fact that if they were able to trade him, they'd have to eat up at least half of that contract. <laughs> at least. I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, look, if if you would eat up half that contract as long as you're getting a good prospect or two 
and the opposition is obviously a major market, you know, they can afford them like the Yankees or right. something, you know, I mean, we talked about well, that first base situation for the Yankees. He also, he took a huge step back last year. He year, did. Miguel Cabrera. He yeah. did. He hit, he hit 250. I think he's bored. Uh, I think he's upset. He realizes yeah. the writing's on the wall. He's like, what am I doing here? Yeah. So that's why. So Detroit, yeah. Detroit, I think, finishes. You didn't ask me what I think win wise for those first two teams. Uh, I, I think Chicago gets around 70, 72 wins. Uh, I, I think Cleveland gets around 95, 97 wins. Uh, I think Detroit gets around 56 to 58 wins. Yeah, I mean, this is. I mean, they still have Victor Martinez team. on the it's team. It's a very bad. So, team. what about the young guys? Your your Candelario kid uh, is there from the Cubbies. So uh, you know, that's a guy. That's certainly a guy that they can look to build around. Uh, they have Candelario. They've got. Uh, first of all, it, they're one of the interesting teams that have their top five or f- five of the top six prospects are all pitchers, and they're all right-handed pitchers. That's good. Uh, so it's good. It, uh, it, it's something that you know maybe you could hope that a few of those guys make it work, uh, but there's not much. I mean, Detroit, there's just, I, I hate to say it, there's just not too much right That's now. That's pretty bad. To be excited about. Yeah, no. It's just, uh, the, you know, you got to hope that some of those younger players, like the Candelaria, and they got the, the catcher, James McCann. James you McCann, know. they also, you know, and like I said, they, they really like uh, 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 Jacoby Jones. Uh, not the Ravens player, but the uh, the guy, the outfielder, who's you know. Oh, he had a monster season at AAA last year. Right. Yeah. So, so keep an eye on him. Okay. And then what about maybe do you trade? You probably try the guy who you could probably get the most of besides Fulmer is probably is probably uh, Castellanos. Uh, yeah. I just, do you I trade just him, or do you try to have him as a as a building block too? Because he's still in the prime. You know, I mean, he's what twenty six. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he had a great year last year. I mean, that was really the first time we've seen him be that good. I mean, everybody will remember in two thousand sixteen, uh, he started out hitting like three thirty or whatever in the first two months. Everybody thought he was, you know, going to win, you know, the batting title. Then he came back down the life. Last year was more what they would hope to see with him. He hit 25 homers uh, and 100 RBIs, so average went down a bit. But uh, he's a guy, I mean, I think you've got to build around him and Fulmer and maybe Candelario. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I mean, I I get the feeling that if Fulmer does really well uh, in the first yeah. half, that they're going to try to get a boatload for you him. You can't, you, you can't. I, I, you can't just trade a 24-year-old potential long-term ace. I can't see it happening. Well, I can't see it. I can't see it happening. You know, I mean, it all depends on what they feel like they've got with those right-handers down in the minors. If they feel comfortable, yeah, but this, is a, this is a proven guy versus five unproven guys. I mean, otherwise, no, that, that would be they would that would be a big no-no in my book. Well, we'll see if, if see if he wants to be there. That's also important. As long as he wants That's to true. be here and he's happy about it. Hey, once upon a time, uh, you know, they, they used to have four aces. Yeah, Jordan Zimmerman just uh, wiped out. See, uh, Rizzo did what he always does. He, he lets guys go just before they're uh, – or he trades them just before he <laughs> knows that you, – you tell you, you just uh, be hey, wary. Hey, Rizzo hasn't won a series in the playoffs, but he does know when his guys are about to, you know – you know, call it, call it, call it a career. Yeah, or you know, if a prospect is a prospect or not. I mean, again, exactly. there's only a couple of them have ever produced anything. One of them is actually Robbie Ray. Uh, and uh, but hey, it's uh, it, it, it. Matter of fact, I think that, I'm trying to remember what deal that was. I forget what, what deal it was. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't think they even have a closer. No, no, no future closer there. So uh, it's going to be a long season. And, and Jose Iglesias, wow, very disappointed after uh, it looked like he was going to be a star uh, with the that Red was, Sox. Oh, the Robbie Ray deal. Wasn't it the Doug Fisher deal? Hmm. I think it was. Okay. Could have been, I guess. Might, maybe. Steve, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. I just looked it up. It was. It was, it was Doug Fisher and Steve Lombardozzi. All right. Nice. That worked out well. Yeah, well, that's that's one of those we got to try to win a world championship, and let's bring in a 
a starter. So yeah, that's what you do. That's what you got to take think, advantage of. And by that. the way, but but look where he <laughs> went. I mean, he was he wasn't he, he was not this pitcher in Detroit. So imagine sure. you're a Detroit fan. You're like, That's what true. did we get? We had the guy, Robbie Ray. He's like one of the most electrifying left young left-handers in the game. And, 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 and see, but what happens? He goes to Arizona. The pitching coach says, do this, do that. He does this, he does that. Boom, he's a different pitcher. So <laughs> it's about your coaching, too. You, you know, you're coaching in the right place. All right, uh, Kansas City. Out of the Royals. Of the Kansas Royals. City's 220 <laughs> to 1. And boy, yeah. has a mighty have fallen. So they're all ready for another rebuild. And uh, Danny Duffy is uh, – now, look, at least when you look at this team compared to the couple of the long shots we've already talked about, at least they have a halfway decent rotation where, all right, maybe – we know Duffy can pitch. Maybe Duffy they can, can get pitch. something out of Kennedy or Carnes, you know, especially Carnes. He's, you know, he's somebody that they're hoping for. Um, yeah. So, yeah, they're going to need to. And then uh, the big blow with Jesse Hahn being out for – uh, the first couple months of the season till the the start they got over from Oakland. Yeah, so they've got at least some sort of rotation, um, and then you know the offense they got some young guys that they're going to be turning to. Uh, your Jorge Soler has been a major disappointment. You're not surprised about that. No, uh, and that was uh, you know a one for one trade for uh, Wade Davis, so that worked out well for the Cubs. Uh, they're obviously the, the, one of the guys that everybody is starting to get. Very, very excited about is Whit Merrifield, and absolutely rightfully so. He had an outstanding season last year. Uh, you know, put himself uh, right up there in, in talks for you know one of the best second. There's a lot of really good second basemen in the game this year, uh, and we're, this is actually the best era, in my opinion, of second basemen uh, in baseball history. Uh, you got about you know 10 to 12 guys each year that could be all stars. Whit Merrifield absolutely belongs in that ranking. Uh, 290 hitter, 20 homers, 80 RBIs. Uh, the guy's, you know, outstanding, and he's a guy that they can really build around. I was surprised that they went and got Lucas Duda. That was uh, my one big surprise, but I guess they had to fill the Eric Hosmer hole. Uh, and then they got Raul Mondesi, another young guy who they're hoping yeah. uh, can turn things around. Uh, didn't really have that great of a start uh, last year, but they also have Chester Cuthbert, uh, a guy who they're going to almost certainly start at third base this year. And then, uh, like we mentioned, they picked up John Jay uh, yesterday. So there's a guy who they're going to start because their outfield is weak. And they also like Hunter Dozier. Uh, so I know he was kind of banged up last year. Uh, Alex Gordon, I mean, has any uh, – very few outfielders that – I mean, you talk about a, like a – if you looked at a graph of Alex Gordon, you would see like that – that it, line going up, 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 and all of a sudden, and it's zoop, straight down. It's like, what on yeah. earth happened to him? Yeah, yeah. So, well, look, he's thirty-four. He's thirty-four years old. So, uh, you know, it's it's just tough for a guy to maintain that kind of year. I mean, that kind of a season for all these years. So, uh, you can't hate him. He's thirty-four years old, and he's a guy who always, you know, like a Dustin Pedroia is what he reminds me of—a guy who always goes ball to the wall, you know, hustles out every ground ball, runs hard to try to catch every ball, dives all over the place. His body's taking a toll. He's missed a lot of time with injuries. So, I mean, yeah. you can't hate him as an outfielder for what he has given, for how much of his body he has given. Uh, Royals fans will always adore him. All right, Minnesota, 35-1. to 1. Uh, This uh, They were able to get to the postseason, so that was a huge accomplishment from last year. Uh, you had Santana. Uh, Berrios, of course, uh, Barrios is uh, a good young pitcher to keep an eye on. They brought in Oda Rizzi, uh, but still, they they that that starting staff is still kind of just okay. You know, there's there's of course, you know, with uh, Berrios, you think that all right, maybe they've got somebody that uh, because of his age, you know, he can he can grow with the, the organization for a while. But other than that, I mean, there's not a whole lot to get excited about. If you had Santana. Who missed a, well, uh, about a month? You know he's getting old. So well, they brought in Michael Pineda, who's also, of course, hurt. Uh, and uh, I don't. Michael know that, Pineda. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's coming back from Tommy John's. But wait a minute. Here's this is one of those things where we've seen guys like Michael Pineda who have the potential to be outstanding players, outstanding <laughs> pitchers, uh, but just are in the wrong situation. market. So yeah, yeah, they're in, in the, the wrong, wrong market, market, wrong situation. Yeah. Maybe, you know, being a New York Yankee, 
put so much stress and pressure on these guys. Being a twin after last year, it looks like it's fun. You know, it looks like they had well, a really fun roster, a fun team. Uh, it looks like it's fun. So maybe he need. comes back. Maybe he's maybe he's a different pitcher. You never know. That's All something right. that I'm sure they didn't. Co- just, I'm sure, it didn't cost much. So why not? It didn't cost too much. They got you know, like you mentioned, they've got some of the big names. They got Oda Rizzi. They've got uh, Kyle Gibson. If they can get him uh, back into you know his full strength and you know throwing like he did, they got a good reliever. They picked up Addison Reed. Uh, you know, one of the bigger reliever relief names out there. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're not done. I think that. This is a team that's going to land one of these three big names in uh, Cobb, Lynn, or Arietta. Well, that would be a big deal. I mean, they, they. I remember when we talked two weeks ago, uh, we were talking about Logan Morrison on his way out. So he lands in Minnesota. So that's a nice right. pickup. Uh, yeah, they, there's, there's they, a guy. There's a guy that's going to hit you 25 home runs or so. Yeah. And they've got a good offense. I mean, there's a lot of very underrated offense. There's a oh, lot yeah, they got, of there's they a got lot of power there. One of the best outfielders, Byron, you know, Byron Buxton, one of the best outfielders. Their outfield actually of Rosario, Kepler, and and Buxton is, is really really good. They're going to be a lot better. They still got. Isn't it crazy that Miguel Sano is only 24 years old? It feels like he's you know upwards of 30 at this point because he's been good for so many years in a row now. And then they still got the ageless wonder Mauer, who you know last year. Had a pretty damn good season. Didn't hit the long ball like like they're used to, but he hit 305 with 70 RBIs. They'll take that any day. Now, uh, as far as we uh, the, the marketable names, Dozier, uh, I'll even throw Morrison. People know who he is. Mauer, Sano, and Buxton. So the yep. other guys, who would you take between if you were you know if if you're trying to take a bargain guy in, in your fantasy draft between Escobar, Kepler, Polanco, or Rosario? Rosario, uh, it's not even close. I mean, he shouldn't even be. Uh, he should be considered a household name. The guy hit close to 300. <laughs> Come on, he hit close to 300. Rosario to- from Minnesota is a household name. All right. Hey, I'm not saying he is. He's a, <laughs> if, he's, if, you're, if you're if you're a baseball fan, if you're oh boy, you better be diehard, man. If you're a, no, come on. If you're an yes. American League fan, if there if you're an American League fan, there's a good chance that Rosario got the best of you last year. Uh, and more and, and more than one. The guy hit 290 with 27 homers and 80 RBIs. I still what think he's going to he slip. I still think he'll slip through the cracks, like because people will still look at the names I mentioned. Put it this way: I have a fantasy draft next week, and he's on my radar for a, you know a, a mid to late round guy. Uh, I don't know if he'll make it that far. All right. So uh, and, and he had what better about... numbers than Buxton. He had way better numbers sure. than Buxton. No, nobody's nobody's doubting that. That's the whole point. Is that well, Buxton just was a top recruit. That's the difference. Yeah. You know, sometimes you get these names that I mentioned, and and you think they're better players, but statistically, especially fantasy wise, they're not. So oh, yeah. that's... that's why I mean that was that was the easiest question you've ever asked me is which of these players are you thinking about in fantasy? It was just I, I was just I was I jumped all over it. I'll take him. I'll take him in my in my 10th to the 13th round, 14th round any day. All right. So uh, I think he's, I think he's a top 20, 30 outfielder in the American league. Okay. Well, he's even better top 20 probably. And, and, and so he's going to get better. And he's good. He's only 26. He's sure. going to get better. And he steals bases. And he's a, he's a, he's a pretty damn good fielder. Uh, you know, as long as he cuts down the strikeouts, that's his biggest issue. He struck out a hundred times last uh, everybody year. Everybody strikes out nowadays. Every every outfielder strikes out. So that uh, Minnesota seems like a good bargain at thirty-five to one. I like it. I like it especially. I like it if they. I like it even more when I think I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of these teams that isn't done. They're going to. Who do you think they should one, go after? Should they go after the the more refined vet like Arietta? I, I would go Lynn. I think Lynn is the best fit for them. Okay. All right. Let's now uh, – so that's the American League Central. And also, I think, I think they win like 85 games, 85, 88 games. Okay. That's not a lot, but okay. That's a playoff team, though. Sure. Yeah, they won 85 last year. All right. Let's go to the uh, your Cubbies. We'll start there in the National League uh, Central. And, How much time you got? Uh, you'll have your <laughs> Cub show before the uh, season yeah. starts, so you can go <laughs> off on them uh, for that show. Uh, anyway – have you seen what they've done in the spring? Good lord, they are good. The spring, look They're out! Good, man. Spring baseball. 
Uh, so, so the big acquisition uh, was uh, the, well, they added a couple of guys in the rotation. Several. They added several big names in the rotation. My goodness, Chatwood, Darvish, Smiley, who again, another guy who's hurt and needs to prove himself. And then they went and got Brandon Morrow. So they basically replaced Wade Davis with Brandon Morrow. That's, and only that's paying still Brandon. tricky, though. That's that's still tricky. It's one year. And, it's one year, but they're only paying and, $2 million. And the guy has got an injury passed. So it's it's a tricky situation. Who would be the closer that would take over if he did land on the DL? If he landed, well, so Justin Wilson's had a good spring, but he did not pitch well uh, when he came up last year. Uh, if I had to guess as of right now who their closer would be if he went down, I'm thinking Justin Grimm or CJ, Carl Edwards, one of those guys. Uh, but this is a team that has too many starting pitchers. So some of these starting pitchers might end up as long-term relievers, which is what they've done well, in the that's past. Well, that would be Montgomery, right? He would be the first guy that has to wind well, up. I don't, well, so right now they have Lester, Hendricks, Darvish, Chatwood, Quintana. Those are five starters. But those are guys that have to be in your, That's got to be your five right there. That's got to be your Lester, five. Lester, Hendricks, Quintana, Chatwood, and Darvish. Yeah, so Montgomery's yeah, got to be in the bullpen. To start the Montgomery season. Says, that means Montgomery, and when Smiley comes back in, in May, I mean, he's got to be in the bullpen. Yeah. Pedro Strokes, Pedro Strokes, another guy who could be that closer. I would never trust him in the closer role, though. Uh, he's, he's got that light. He's got some of the best stuff of any pitcher in baseball in, in the last, you know, 10 years. It's just his, his command and control and his temperament sometimes uh, really cost him big. All right, and then, uh, of course, offensively, uh, this team, you know, it's Rizzo and it's Bryant. Those are the big boys. Uh, and, 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 and Contreras. So I think Contreras is the number one catcher in baseball this year for fantasy baseball. I think that he is the, the number one guy to be on the lookout for. He steadily improved each year. Last year, uh, you know, he only got uh, 117 starts, hit 275 with 21 homers and 75 RBIs. So if they give him another 20 starts, like I think they're going to, uh, he's outstanding. Don't forget about Ian Happ, another guy who's a young guy. Uh, Javi Baez is probably – he's a guy that's a big name that I wouldn't trust in fantasy. Yeah, he he'll strikes out too runs. much. He'll, he'll hit the home runs. He'll give it the RBIs, but he'll strike out. Addison Russell, I'm expecting a big, big bounce back here from him. And a guy that a lot of people don't know about just yet, who are starting to know about him, Albert Almora, another guy that really – uh, he was a first-round pick several years back, uh, a guy that I'm expecting to take a big step forward this year. This is a team that it, they had the same problem last year. They had too many players for the lineup. Yeah, I could easily see Almora as the uh, starter uh, by who knows. Because, first of all, you still have to wait and find out whether Schwarber, is, is he going to? Because, look, you, you oh, said it left. last year. Schwarber, Schwarber, I mean, he's, he's, Schwarber, he's, Schwarber cut down. Well, Schwarber cut down 30 pounds uh, of, of fat because he was a chubby guy. Uh, put on the muscle, uh, has gotten faster, and he kept his power. So Schwarber is going to be in left field. It'll be Almora in center, Hayward in right. The biggest question is, is what do you do with Ben Zobris? Because you have too many infielders. Well, he's getting you also old. Have Hap, but you have Hap. This is, this is the best problem the Cubs have, is that Hap, Zobris, and Bryant can play basically any position you want. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Zobris is getting old. I mean, he's definitely just the bench guy now who can fill in. Uh, no, he's not. He's not definitely just the bench guy. I bet you he's on the opening day start, uh, starting lineup. But dude, he's like he's going to be what thirty seven this year. I mean, thirty seven. Come yeah. on, I mean, he's a bench guy. So, which is nothing wrong with that. And he's gonna he's gonna play a lot. You know, not as much as oh, he yeah. played before, but he's gonna play. Oh, yeah. uh, he's definitely gonna still be a guy you can count on in the clutch. No, no question. Um, but look. This, this is uh, Cubs are one of those teams. See, I think what happened to them is is when they won the World Series that year and they played so well. I just think they had one of those years where everybody played so well. everybody had career well, years. Everybody. And, well, guess what? And they had the bullpen and all that. Then last year, everybody kind of settled back in. You know, players. You know, the, the top players, the Bryant's and the Rizzo, are still great. But, you know, and of course, Contreras played great. But then you had guys, young it's guys, that kind of came it's, back it's down. It's all about the pitching. I mean, the biggest story of the week in Cubs world is that John Lester is going to be throwing, you know, ground balls to first base as pickoff attempts. I mean, obviously, can, can Kyle Hendricks, can he be as good as he's been? You know, he struggled to start out last year, ended with a 3.03 ERA, which anybody 
will take with any starting pitcher unless his name is, you know, Kershaw or Bumgarner. You're expecting a, a 3.0 ERA is outstanding in this world of baseball, the way that these offenses can hit. So, Who was their number? And, uh, who was their – their was was Lackey like a Lackey. number two or three starter when they won the World Series? No, no. The, it was um, – Lester, Arietta, Hendricks. Arietta, okay, that's what I'm forgetting. So, yeah, so that, see that that's the thing is that I, I look at here and I and I and 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 what I still see they need Darvish to be Darvish. yeah and 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 if they get that then uh, then they're back it's to being World a World team. Series team yeah if they don't get that uh, then uh, see there's still uh, this is still not this this team is still not better than the team that won the World Series. Yet. No, but that um, team also had Chapman as a closer. Well, that's uh, the point. You know. that, that's what I'm trying to say. So so you, that doesn't mean they can't win it with this team. It just means I that on paper, uh, as talented as they are, and they're going to win the division, uh, fact is that, you know, there's – you, you know, it's not as easy as everybody might think, you know, because look, I, I look, you know how I am. Regular season's easy. We can get to the playoffs. How are we not going to make the playoffs? But it's not about the it's not about getting to the way, playoffs. Don't you, don't you feel bad for the National League that they have the Dodgers, Cubs, the Nationals? It's just it's a, it just seems yeah, cool. It's, it, is, it's, it is what it is. That's the thing about baseball nowadays. I guess the, I guess the American League has at this point everybody's thinking it's going to be the Yankees. Astros and, and Indians. And Red so. Sox and uh, Indians, yeah, pretty much. All right, so um, what's uh, – and, and who's the top prospect? 90, 95 wins, I'm saying, for the uh, – Top prospect because I know they've they, – that's the one area well, that they're going to need to do a better job of. You know, they've lost a lot of guys over the years. So the one that everybody's looking at a lot this spring is Victor Caratini, who was a catcher first base guy. Uh, he's going to make the roster on opening day because it's just him and Contreras behind the plate. Remember, there's no more David Roth, uh, and, and so so it's and there's no more uh, Montero. Uh, Montero who caused mm-hmm. all kinds of issues in the locker room last year. So it's going to be Caratini. Uh, they're pretty high on uh, uh, Aramis Edmund, the uh, shortstop. But again, yeah, he's they young. don't have anywhere. They have nowhere to put him. Yeah, he's young nowhere anyway. He's a young kid. And he's too young. Yeah. Oscar De La Cruz, a uh, starting pitcher. Uh, Again, another guy who they're high on. He didn't have the best, uh, 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 what do you call it, a minor season last year. But there's just not much there, like you said. But that's because they've traded away sure. the correct prospects to get the pieces that they have right now. And their team is so young. The Cubs are one of the youngest teams in baseball. Their infield is still all, but if you, if you, okay, if you throw out Zobris like you are, they're still all under the age of 20. Seven or 28 years old, and that's Rizzo. Bryant's only 26, Baez 25, Hap 23, Russell 25. Oh, they're done. They're just all about now. See, that's the thing, though. It's just right now. It's just all about letting these kids play and yeah. free agency, and that's it. And then uh, just build up the farm system with a, for another two or three years of drafts. But that's the thing. Don't I, the Cubs are not going to be a team at the deadline that is going to go out and trade guys from their farm system to get back superstars. They don't have that anymore. They just no, they don't. don't have that anymore, but they're also hoping they don't have to do that. Yeah, it would be an injury situation that for you to have, have to do to. that. It would have to because they have as good of a top three starting pitcher in baseball. And, and, and probably the biggest one probably comes from Morrow because you do have enough depth at starting pitching. You've got enough depth offensively, so it comes down to Morrow. If Morrow is the man again, like he was last year, but keep in mind he wasn't a closer. So if he's the man as a closer, he's healthy and all that, great. But if he's well, not, this is, that's what you Remember, Wade Davis wasn't really a closer last, before last year with the Cubs either. Was, yeah, but Wade guy. Davis was pretty awesome with the Royals. So Yeah, well, we'll see. It's a very similar thing. This is why they did this. It's a very similar thing. Wade Davis got a big-ass contract, and uh, Brandon Morrow, you know, they're paying him $2 million. Yeah, well, that's that would be the only position where if it fails, the Cubs will have to go out and try to bring in somebody. Uh, the question is, would they be able to do it? And you know what? And it Joe probably Matt, comes from the major Matt, leagues, though. They probably have yeah. to trade a major leaguer. They would. They would. They'd probably. I mean, oh, they also got Steve Ciszek too, another reliever who could throw. They could throw in. I totally forgot about him. Ciszek, a guy who could also be. Uh, you know, a, a mop up closer if, if need be. Yeah, they've these got, are all, yeah, regular season. You got a bunch of regular season closers besides Morrow. 
Morrow's the guy that has to be the closer there when the postseason the comes. Postseason. Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, let's get to the Reds at uh, 200 to one. And look, the Reds are kind of like the I White Sox. I think that's tough for the Reds. I think that they're. I think that this is a slightly better team than people are giving them credit for. Here, here's the problem with the Reds: is they're in the division with the Cardinals and now the Brewers and the Cubs. Yeah, this is look. If you're if you a Reds fan, Reds team, if you put this Reds team in the AL Central, they could compete for the wild card. Yeah, they're well as long as they're starting young pitching produces that's the big question well, mark exactly uh, that is the big question you would hope it would they, they they've been building up with these kids and now it's time for them to stay healthy and go out there and produce uh i'm still i'm still not sold i uh, on the fact that they continue to let brian price manage this team uh <laughs> i don't think he's the right guy for the job but hey they kind of stink anyway so why not but uh, look, because of the fact that they did have injuries last year, if they're if they're under because they could still underachieve if they're healthy by, sure. by the midway point, because we do agree they're sure. talented. If they underachieve, they better make a, a coaching change uh, because they got a young team. They better make sure they bring in someone who knows what they're doing. You think Billy Hamilton will be on the team past the deadline? Um, for a different I say not, no, but for a different reason than he'll be traded. I think he'll just. I think he stinks. I think teams have gotten over. I mean, look, he's fast as hell. If he gets on base, you know, he's one of the most dangerous base runners we've ever seen uh, in, in baseball. But uh, he he stinks. He's not a great fielder. Uh, he's he can't hit. I I, I, I said it's maybe he ago. shouldn't even start. Maybe they should. Uh, you well, know, maybe think, we should trade him before regular season. Think, I'm not sure he's going to start. Yeah, I mean, Winker should probably be starting every day. And Winker, you got Winker, Duvall, and Shebler. Yeah, I think are your, are your three starting outfielders. Yeah, yeah. So and hey, look, they got a very good young catcher in Tucker Barnhart. So they got Tucker Barnhart. They also have Devin Metzrosko, who uh, is uh, yeah, I mean, he's had always a bad injured year though. last year, but Tucker Barnhart was outstanding last. Yep. Year. Uh, and they got a you know they got they got some, they got Eduardo Suarez. They have uh, Joey Votto, who is just unbelievable. For the ageless wonder that he is, they got Scooter Jeanette, Scooter. who Scooter had a career year Scooter. last year. Scooter had an unbelievable year last year. Yeah, putting the name Scooter. There, there are definitely some 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 Cincinnati kids that got the name Scooter late last year that were born. All right, now can you play uh, Suarez or Nick Sensel at short? Because Nick Sensel needs to be uh, with the Reds well, uh, probably yeah. by the second half of the season. Well, Nick Sensel needs to be with the Reds probably by whenever the Chris Bryant date is. I would say the first week of May or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, so you know he's a number seven prospect. So who baseball. plays short? Suarez. Suarez does, and then Sensel is yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. But so the third. I, Suarez has more range uh, than than Sensel. They also again a guy that's going to absolutely make the roster who they can plug in at any. You know, infield position other than first is uh, Jose Peraza, too. All right. And then Iglesias was a big time breakout closer for them. So they're going to hope that he continues to uh, be a big man there. That would be a huge, huge. Because uh, we talked a lot about these some of these bad teams already, and nobody's got a young closer like Iglesias. So that's another no. reason the Reds are ahead of the game Yeah, uh, with a lot of these other uh, rebuilding teams. Which, like which said, of the young. It's all about. It's all about can Amir Garrett figure it out? Can can Brandon Finnegan? Who do you like the most? Out? Who's your who, who would you who do you trust the most with those pitchers? Those young pitchers. Who do you like the most? It, it's it's tough. I mean, it's based off of what I've seen. You know, I I, I like. I mean, Castillo. Amir Garrett. Amir Garrett has the stuff. Who'd you say? Castillo. Castillo is the one that. Definitely has the you know the the best potential. Uh, this is I have no idea who's going to start opening day. I assume it's going to be Homer Bailey, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put throw him out there on opening day. Why do you um, like Garrett? I mean he's wild, you know. I mean it's no, uh, he's, just because he's got the he's got the potential. He's got the potential. He's got the stuff. He's got the velocity. Can he just pull it together? Yeah, that's why I like him. Maybe he should be a closer or a setup guy. Well, they don't, well yeah, they don't need him. Uh, yeah, you should be somebody that because they need some more more guys behind Iglesias because they do have a lot of young pitchers. So yeah, yeah. and too then many. Homer they Bailey. Too many. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, uh, it's he's definitely a trade candidate to be as a good first half. So oh, I'm sure. Oh, Dave Scafani's going to start up big day. So 
he's got to be there. Okay, Dave, starter. All right, let's now go to the Milwaukee Brewers, and the Brewers had the big year. They were basically the Minnesota of the uh, National League Central. Uh, and except- then they went and won. The Brewers have so far won the offseason. There's no question about that. Yeah. In terms of getting new players uh, and, and, and securing the – I mean, they have so many outfielders that their biggest story of the week is that they're probably going to play Ryan Braun at first base this year. And that's uh, – yeah. Well, look, he's got to find a spot if he wants to go out there and play, and it's not the American League, so – Because they have Broxton, Yelich, and Kane are yeah. all defensively better oh, yeah. than, than Braun, and, and they can all hit the ball, too. Uh, look, no and question. Domingo Santana, and don't forget about Domingo Santana, a guy with 30 home runs and 85 RBIs last year. They got too many out They must be. They got to trade somebody. They've got too many. They, got they five have to have outfield. a plan. You would think that when they went out and got Kane, that they had a plan. That, well, they all got right. Kane and Yelich on the same day. Yeah, they had to have a plan. There's no way that you can go with all these outfielders when you have. Well, when the you plan have... is the plan is, and and so here's the here's the thing that's going to shock a lot of people is that Eric Thames is their first baseman. So if Ryan Braun plays first base, what does that mean for Eric Thames? That means Eric Thames gets traded to an American League team in DH. Yeah, somebody's going to be traded, and uh, you know the pitching though they they can't win without Jimmy Nelson, so they yeah. got to get him healthy. Uh, how long? How, how, you know what the timetable is uh, on on when he's going to be available? Because uh, look, you know Chase Anderson, Zach Davies. That's a nice couple of young starters up front, but Nelson's the ace. And so he's so he's not going to be ready until after opening day for sure. Uh, he's definitely not going to be ready. I don't think until May at the earliest. So once they get him back, uh, that obviously gives them a huge boost. This means they need a lot out of, you know, Zach Davies, who, you know, won 17 games last year, was pretty was pretty good, was, you know, a guy that stayed true to what, you know, they would hope he would. They need a lot out of him. I can't believe that anybody went out and got Yavani Gallardo. And, and <laughs> yeah, wow. I can't imagine that that guy is going to ever see a start for them unless it's in, 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 in the most dire situation. They have chased in from the Padres. Here's a guy who's going to be in their opening day rotation. Yeah, he should be your number five starter, Jason. Well, I think well he's going to end up having to be their number three or four starter due to the injury uh, of uh, of Nelson. Well, they need Woodruff. Woodruff is the guy they need to take that next step. You know, that's well, a young kid that got some starts last year. Didn't have a great uh, you know few starts for the for the big ball club. No. Uh, look, he, he's 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 probably he really is a four. Maybe I mean so if you have just seen a Woodruff as four or five, that's fine. But you need Nelson. Fine, yeah. You need Nelson Davies yeah, you and need Anderson. Nelson. Yep, yep. Uh, and again, you need Zach Davies to to continue to take the steps forward. You, you know, the last two years he's taken slight steps forward. They yeah. need that. Yeah. And do you trust uh, Knebel? Yeah, I mean, I, I, teams <laughs> for some reason or another could not figure him out. Like he was, <laughs> you know, he was. As surprising as okay, he did right, walk so a lot of guys, though, but uh, you know that's what but I'm you saying. Know walked, you know who else walked a lot of guys? Zach Britton walked a lot of guys. Uh, Zach as long as you can, Britton. Yeah, as long as you can, as long as you can, as <laughs> Please long as don't you can work your Zach way Britton out. To Corey Canevel. Look, he walked as many guys as he allowed hit. All right, so right. Well, that's that's, that's yeah, well, that's, that's a high whip. He allowed, well, yeah, it's a high. It actually wasn't that high because he didn't allow that many hits. All right. Well, look, uh, just do it a second year. That's all. If he does it a second year, then that's a great find for them because he nobody expected him to to, to yeah. perform like that. So. And the only the last guy we got to talk about who they're really hoping has a big year. I'm not terribly sold on him. Is Jet Bandy. Okay. So they went and you know they have Stephen Vote uh, and Jet Bandy, two catchers that they're both really high on. Jet Bandy, uh, for some reason kept on starting games last year. He started 60 games. Uh, he didn't hit well. He's a very good defensive catcher. So we'll see. So maybe that's what they go out and get. They trade an outfielder or a, or a Thames for a catcher. Or, yeah, I mean, or they go get Jonathan Lucroy again. Back to they the could do that. He's still out there? Free agent still? He's, he's still out there. All right. How about Brett Phillips? You like Brett Phillips? Because that's another out, out, young outfielder. Uh, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen enough of Brett Phillips to make my decision on him. Uh, I know that he's the guy that has the best laugh in baseball. 
That's all everybody knows. The best Brett laugh. Phillips. Oh yeah, look it up. Google the Brett. Phillips Google the laugh. laugh of Brett Phillips. It's, 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 it'll get you. It'll get you. Is it funnier than Charles Barkley's golf swing? It's on that level. All it's, right. It's so out there. Okay. It's on that level. All I right. Hope, put it this way. I hope for his sake. It, it thinks that he's on this team with these five outers. If he yeah, was on another that's team, the point. If he was on, if he was on, uh, if he's on another team. You know, he could be a starting outfielder in, in, on opening day. That's why they should be making a trade. So Brewers definitely making a trade. And I like the Brewers. At a, I like the Brewers as a high wild card. Season. Twenty-five to one. Would you? Uh, who do you like more? Uh, World Series futures, Brewers or Minnesota? The Brewers, definitely. And, okay. and I understand that they're twenty-five, and the Brew and the Twins are thirty-five. But this, I take this Minnesota. Okay. Uh, we could take a little side action on that if you'd like. Okay. All right. Next up is Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh is 150 to 1. And uh, we talked Another about this a couple of years ago. Well, look, uh, I, I just body slammed Neil Huntington for two years when he did not go out and make trades at the deadline when he had a playoff team. And it, it's this is what happens. You don't, I mean, he's a good, nice GM. But there's a lot of guys like that in the world, in the business world, guys that are that can make a nice living for themselves. You know, they're smart guys, but they, there's something about it. that They're, they're not like, uh, you know, they, they don't take chances. You know, they don't have that 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 it factor where they go, this is the year I'm going to I'm going to trade three prospects and go for it. And, and, you know, like the Marlins did a couple of times and, and led to World Series championships. Sure. But Huntington didn't do it. And now it's about rebuilding again, and McCutcheon's gone. So who's the guy that you look now at this team? McCutcheon's gone, and Garrett Cole is gone. What they did with Garrett Cole is what I'm begging, you know, the Orioles to, to not do with Machado and stuff. Like that. <laughs> and it's what it's just it's such a just such a shame for Pirate fans to see a, a proven ace get traded for next to nothing. What did they get? What was their prize? They got Colin Moran. Uh, Colin Moran, boy, wasn't he a prospect three years ago, four years ago? Uh, who? Uh, put it this way, they didn't get anything. They got Colin Moran. They got uh, Joe Musgrove. Oh boy. Oh yeah, he didn't even got, he didn't even pitch well for Houston last year. And then they got two minor leaguers, two uh, mid level prospects. Pathetic. Look, I don't know. Just I mean, pathetic. I, I, the, the one thing I am concerned, or I would have been concerned about with Pittsburgh, we'll talk more about Cole next week, is just the fact that did they see something in Cole after the way he pitched last year, which really wasn't very good? Was it more of Cole being, you know, I hate being here kind of thing? Or was it they, they saw something and said, look, he's just not the same guy. And I, we're not going to give this guy a whole lot of money, and we're going to just, no, just trade just, him now. And we're not going to we're not going to get the exact answer to that question either. Unfortunately. Well, we we might this year if he doesn't pitch well. You know, well, that's uh, that's the thing. So who do you who, who's the guy on the roster right now? Is it Josh Bell or is it Marte? I'm talking of a young guy or a Polanco that would be potentially the face of the franchise, uh, or you don't believe in any of them. Um, maybe uh, Philippe Rivero. Or Jamison Talon, but those are pitchers. So give me an everyday guy. Well, Jamison Talon, he's a fan's favorite because of his story, you know, coming back, beating the cancer and everything. It was one of the more emotional moments in baseball last year when he came back and started. Uh, I don't think they have a face of the franchise anymore. You can't just replace Garrett Cole and and McCutcheon. As, it just doesn't work like that. Okay. Marte, you know, Marte got suspended for half the season last year because of the, you know, the steroids. So, you know, people aren't terribly thrilled about him. Uh, Polanco is, you know, probably their their best hitter, but he struggled mightily last year. Yeah. Mightily. And yeah. then, you know, another guy, and, and then you have Josh Harrison, who who is probably one of their, you know, top three players demanding to get traded after, they, after the McCutcheon goes and after uh, uh, Cole goes. And you got the old man, David Freeze. So Josh Bell is the future, but he's not a face of a franchise. He, I mean, he can't be yet, you know? I mean, he had a good year last year, but that's all he's had. All but three of his home runs came last year in his career. All but 19 of his RBIs came last year in his career. Yeah, the one thing that uh, they really need is someone like, uh, I don't know how much longer Mitch. it's going to take Mitch Keller uh, to make it 
uh, to the big club, but they need that. See, if they had that 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 Garrett Cole type, you know, that 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 next guy with ta- the tie on. But know, Mitch Keller, Mitch Keller is not there. Mitch Keller is not a Cole. He's not. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't Cole. When Cole showed up in the minors, it was obvious this guy was the real deal. Mitch Keller has been good, but he hasn't been great. Well, he's got good they stuff, have, but another, you know, he may have a choice. And I mean, a guy who another another guy who they've got to be extremely high on is Austin Meadows, who, yeah. in my opinion, uh, you know, depending on how good he does the first month in spring er, in, uh, in in the minors, he should be on the roster come May June. He hasn't made his major league debut yet. No. All right. Well, maybe he. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the thing is, though. I mean, who is taking over for uh, McCutcheon in the outfield? Well, I is mean, it, Adam I mean, Frazier is. Is it Frazier right now? Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I would assume, you know, Frazier, Polanco, Marte has got to be your outfield, your starting outfield. Uh, I mean, they just signed Corey Dickerson, who has just been hopping around all over the place yeah. in spring training. So I can't imagine. That he's gonna make. The, I don't, I'm not sure he makes the opening day roster. The good thing is, is they do have Rivero, and it's very rare that you have yourself a bona fide closer from the left hand side. And this, oh, this is the other guy that I was thinking of with Ray. This is the other yeah. guy, but but this is a guy that again, you know, that Rizzo had to deal in order to make sure that he got something in return. Uh, but that's that's and they they desperately need Tyler Glasnow to have a good year. Yes, he desperately. That's desperately, that's the other guy. Desperately yes. need it. He's gonna be in the starting rotation with Joe Musgrove, with yes. Ivan Nova, with Jamison Tyon. I mean, he needs to be the guy because he's the guy. He is the guy yep. they thought was gonna be the next Garrett Cole. Well, that's that's see that when it, if if Glasnow and Tyon can pitch like they like you know they have their years their breakouts. And we know Nova Cool and Williams can pitch. I'm not saying that sure. they're great pitchers, but you know they can pitch. Sure. Uh, that all of a sudden with Rivero closing games, and let's say Polanco, Marte, and Bell all the, uh, do their thing, and Harrison. Now all of a sudden Pittsburgh is okay. Now, as if you're a fan, you're 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 enjoying yourself at least when you didn't think you were going to. So it uh, it, it at enjoying least enjoying yourself there. a little bit. What, hey, you still have a top. You have a top five ballpark in baseball. Go to the game. What happened to uh, what again? What again? What happened to Sean Rodriguez? What do you mean? What happened to him? Well, what happened to him? I mean, I know that there was. Uh, He's some, on the roster. Uh, there, there was something that that happened last year, and I and I forget. There was. A, I remember seeing something about him. Oh, he was in a car crash. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. So he's okay though, healthy and everything. Yeah, I think I think he should be fine to go, but I'm not sure he sees. You know, much playing time. I think that they've just got better players. Sure. All right. So that's Pittsburgh, and finally it's St. Louis, a twenty-two to one to win the World Series, and uh, too high. So you think that uh, you, you don't think that? Well, I, so you believe my that, definition of high. My definition of high is it, 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 it's backwards from I guess yours. So <laughs> I, I think that they should be up more to like forty, fifty. Really? Really? Wow. Maybe, 35 to 40, actually. I'll go 35 All to right. 40. All right. I'll disagree with you on that. You know, and why do you not like them? Why? I just I just don't see much there. You don't I see mean, much there. I don't see much there. All right. All right. So so let's see. Matt Carpenter, uh, Azuna, uh, you got Molina. Uh, they've got a few other decent players in Fam and Fowler. Uh, you you've got the rotation, Carlos Martinez. You got young Luke Weaver, who could do be you, very good this do year. Do you have? Do you really have the rotation? Can we say they have the rotation? Well, if if Carlos Martinez is their ace and Luke Weaver is their number two. Okay, I mean because Waka is not. Waka. And Alex Reyes winds up if he's healthy. Yes, if that's. He's healthy. But that's you know I mean is he is he healthy now? Alex Reyes is even going to be a starter. I don't think. Is that because so, they don't want to stretch him out too early? They'd rather I put him in. I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. All right. Well, that's that's okay because that is the one thing that definitely is their weakness is the bullpen. So you show me their rotation. Then. Well, you have Carlos Martinez and Luke Weaver. Then what? And you've got well, hopefully you got another talented kid in Mikolas. 
Hopefully, that, that's big it. Hopefully, I mean that is big a big. Hopefully. Of course, that is definitely a. Uh, you know, that's and you're taking a chance with anybody that goes to Japan. And, You've got a uh, 75 year old Yadier Molina. You still have Matt Carpenter, who's also getting old. Uh, I will say this though: they have uh, a player who I'm very, I was very, very impressed with last year, Jose Martinez, who should be their everyday first baseman. He's he's somebody that scares the hell out of me. They have him. Uh, you know, they have Jed Jerko, who's just not going to hit as well as he did last year. It's just not going to happen. He had a career year last year. And I also, I I just, and, and and one thing that they still continue to have is still a very good farm system. So so you have and, Jack and Flaherty. Will. And they always will. And I they mean, always will. Why can't Jack Flaherty uh, be somebody that they could uh, turn to at some point during the season? That's possible. He pitched for them cool. last year. So uh, uh, Carson yeah, Kelly yeah. would be a starter well, on a lot did. of teams, a catcher. Maybe they trade him. It all depends on how long uh, they expect Molina to hang around. I can't. You can't trade a 23-year-old prospect like Carson Kelly. Well, if not you're going to get a superstar not when back. you have a 37, 35-year-old Molina. Well, that's the thing. What if Molina is like Tom Brady and he's like, I'm going to play for another three years? As, no, in the American League, you could do it. In the National League, as a catcher, yeah, but he doesn't even want to come out of games now. I mean, I know, I know, it's ridiculous. Well, eventually, it's going to catch up to him. It will. It will. I'm not saying you trade him and get back a, a single Look, A ball I, player. I, I love, I love Yadi Molina as a Cubs fan. He is so exciting, and and he is just one of those players that is just a thrill to watch. His passion for the game sometimes gets him into trouble. But it's as, as as good as anybody's in baseball. You know, he's like the opposite of like a Zach Grinky who just goes out there to pitch for a paycheck. Uh, uh, Molina, you know, he absolutely loves it. This poor guy, when he is 50 years old, won't be able to walk. I mean, I, I would agree with that. I don't <laughs> think he cares. But, I yeah, look, I, I don't think this then. team, but keep in mind, I'm not looking at this team as is and says this team is going to the playoffs because of the so farm like system. The, they will add. They will well, add. No question. And I, and I won't maybe Arietta is going to sign here. <laughs> maybe. I wouldn't be. I was going to say I won't be surprised if they get Arietta or uh, Alex Cobb. I mean, they might just want to, you know, with the whole rivalry Cub thing. Let's bring Arietta here, and at the at the trade deadline, let's trade a couple of our top prospects and bring back, you know, a good, really good player. So that's why hey, I, that's what I like about teams like the Cardinals is is that. But I look, I understand twenty two is on the border because any lower and that's probably too low. Any higher though, and I, so twenty two is like, yeah, I don't know if I'm even going to take him or not. I might want to watch him a little bit and see what happens. Uh, no, and it's, 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 they're not for me. In fact, I think the Brewers win five to seven games more than this year. All right. Uh, and Waka is the other guy that uh, that. Oh, that's, that's the one. That's the one that I said. I said you have Waka is is not Waka anymore. You know, <laughs> Waka last year. I mean, yes, he was a shell of himself. Yeah, but he he wasn't as bad as as it as it seemed. He 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 had he pitched he pitched okay, but he didn't pitch the superstar guy we thought he was going to be. No question about that. Uh, uh, he had his walks were up, uh, his strikeouts were up. I'll give him that much. But his hits were way up, uh, highest in his career. His home runs, highest in his career. Uh, his whip was his second highest in his career. And his ERA was also his second highest in his career. So I'm out on Wonka. Don't draft him in fantasy, kids. All Stay right. off the drugs. Okay. All right, so there you go. Uh, that is the Central Division in the National League uh, and the American League. Uh, here on Prime Sports Baseball. So next Thursday, we are going to cover the West. And uh, then in two weeks, we are going to preview the 2018 season. We'll take a look at all the futures. We'll get our future plays and our predictions. And you don't want to miss that because last year, I did take Houston as one of my top four picks. So <laughs> I must pat myself on the back for that one. Uh, hey, I... Hey, I picked the Diamondbacks, baby. I was the one that You did. Projected you took that 150 to 1, were they at the time? Yeah. Something like that. 125, 150 to 1. So, so yeah, so that's it why you don't want to miss crazy. it. You got the Astros, you got the Diamondbacks from last year. So, uh, make sure that you tune into our future show for baseball coming up in two weeks and uh, you won't regret it. So, Scott, appreciate it. We'll be talking to you next Thursday for baseball, but uh, me and you will talk on Monday. 
College hoops, bracketology. Best time of the year. I've said it on like seven shows in a row. Best time of the year. Baseball starting. College basketball, March Madness. What more could you want in the sports world? All right. That's Scott Zolatoro. I'm Greg DePama. Thanks again for tuning in to Prime Sports Baseball. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at PrimeSN. And also, if you would like to wager on the World Series futures, go to uwager.eu on our website. And right now they have a nice little deal, $100 risk-free wager with a $100 minimum deposit. Uh, and, uh, of course, we also have our, our media sponsor over at Covers.com as well. So check them out. Uh, they've got a nice deal, too. Uh, and uh, that's something that we'll be talking more about uh, on Monday, of course. With uh, We'll have some more guests from Covers.com on that show. So we're looking forward to that. And I forget what the uh, – what is that? They have uh, 50% – let me just get that. Uh, let's see. If uh, Covers.com, you can get 50% off any purchase by using promo code PRIME50. Again, PRIME50. Use that code to get 50% off any purchase at Covers.com. For Scott Salvatore and Greg DePama, thanks for tuning in to Prime Sports Baseball on the Prime Sports Radio Network.